Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today, I wanna to take a little bit of time, hopefully a little bit of time, to talk about gym flooring. And regardless if you're planning on doing deadlifts, dropping weights, whatever the case may be, I think a gym floor is a good investment for anyone, and it doesn't have to be an expensive one. So I'm just gonna share some general insight, which I think might be beneficial to you if you're looking at making a home gym and wanna make sure you're protecting your floor and your equipment as well, regardless of if you own your home, rent your home, or live at home with your parents, which no fault of your own. I'd, Envy you guys, no mortgage, no rent checks, must be pretty nice. But that being said, I really wanna focus here on rubber flooring and real rubber flooring. I'm not talking about those cheap foam mats you can get on Amazon or Home Depot, the ones that maybe my two-year-old might be playing around on in his playroom. While they might be super comfortable and super cheap, they're also terrible for lifting because they're gonna compress when you try to do any movement on them. They're not going to protect your floors from heavy weights and they're going to rip and tear over time. Please stay away from those, again, what I'm going to show you is infinitely more durable, and actually it's not that expensive either, which is very, very good. So do yourself a favor, go to your local tractor supply store or go to tractorsupplystore.com, I don't even know what their website is, I will link it in the description box below, and find their stall mats. These things are four by six feet, three quarters of an inch thick, about 100 pounds each, and only roughly somewhere between 38 to $45, depending on what store you're going to, and what deals they have going on. They do these $5 off deals every now and then. So on average, I found them to be right around $40 each. So even if you need to cover 100 square feet of gym space, that's going to cost you about 160 bucks. Still very cheap. And again, I've been using these things in my home gym for the past five years, have had never had an issue with the foundation cracking or any issues on the floor at all. And that's despite people like Garrett Blevins coming to my house and deadlifting like 800 pounds and making me feel really bad about myself. So these things are tremendous, they're very affordable, and they cover a large footprint. I say that because if you go to Tractor Supply, you might also see some of their other things, which are three by four and a half inch thick, and also about half the price, down around 20 some to 30 some dollars, and you might think you're gonna save yourself some money. Don't do it. Get the ones that cover more area and are thicker because they're going to do a much better job at protecting your floor and you'll need less of them. It'll be a lot better in the long run to go with the right ones right off the bat, especially if you're going to be building like a deadlift platform where you might want to stack two mats on top of each other to give you an inch and a half worth of thickness, which doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it's pretty thick. <laughs> now, you could also apply stuff like plywood underneath. A lot of people have Tutorials online, including myself, I have one on how to build an Olympic platform, which you could just shrink down if you wanna make a deadlift platform only. You could just go and buy a full sheet of plywood from Home Depot, hopefully about three quarters of an inch thick, which is gonna be four by eight, and then get a stall mat, cut it into a couple pieces, some two by four pieces for the ends, and then get another piece of plywood for the middle, a four by four piece to make your own deadlift platform. So if you wanna put your gym logo or stickers or whatever else, you can do that. Or again, you could just double up on the stall mat itself and just make it easier if you don't care about a logo or anything like that. I have been getting a lot of questions from people saying, can they just deadlift on a single layer of stall mat? You probably could. I just wouldn't really suggest it. I feel a lot safer just telling you to go with an inch and a half level of thickness because I've never had any issues on that. And again, it's not going to increase the total cost that much, especially if you're buying local at a tractor supply store. So that being said, I just talked about making a deadlift platform and potentially cutting the stall mats. This thing can get pretty difficult to cut, again, given the size and the weight of it. So some things that I've found helpful is getting something like a T-square in order to help make sure that my cuts are straight and I can line it up with the actual stall mat itself so I don't end up with a diagonal cut or a janky cut and just something like a box cutter with some fresh blades, blades plural. I find I go through these a lot and the fresher the blade you have, the better your cuts are. Some people will tell you you can spray things on like WD-40 on the blade itself and it helps cutting uh, go smoother. I've tried it, I found it's the same pain in the ass regardless of which way you slice it. You like that pun? Work that in there real nice. Uh, but what also helps is getting like a secondary piece of wood, something that's not too thick, but putting it under the stall mat near where you're cutting it to kind of elevate it a little bit. That way you can get your blade all the way through and you're not trying to cut and press up against the concrete floor. That'll kind of help you work it a little bit if you don't make a cut all the way through the first time. So that can really help. Cutting stall mats might also come into play when you're actually laying them down. Again, I've talked about how big they are, how bulbous they are being at 100 pounds, and even though they're six feet long and technically you could have a friend help you and still be six feet away to conform to social distancing laws, 
They're still kind of a pain in the ass to move around. You might not have someone to help you. They do sell these grippers that you can use to, as the name intends, grip onto it and move it much easier. I don't think you need these unless you're planning on moving a lot of stall mats. I'm talking like more than five because that's going to wreck you. Trust me, you might not think it's gonna be a hard thing to do by yourself. These things are very much a pain in the ass to move, especially if you have like a little car you're trying to cram them in. The best way to go about that, by the way, is making them into a taco, shoving them in there and then letting them open up, if you will. Take that for what it's worth. Um, but when you're actually moving them to and from your car to your basement or your garage, how far you have to go and where you wanna move them, those grippers can come in handy. So not only will I link the tractor supply store for the mats, I'll link some of the grippers maybe on Amazon or wherever I can find them cheaper with a quick uh, Google search. And then when you're actually putting them in your gym, one of the things I might suggest doing as well is laying them a little bit staggered. So from row to row, if you're laying multiple stall mats, don't have it so that you're having maybe like four stall mats in a row all meet at the same point where all four corners are touching. I find the issue with this is the stall mats tend to move a little bit. Even though they're 100 pounds, even though you might have your rack on top of them, I do find that stall mats tend to move some. So if you can offset them each row, if you're laying that many stall mats, it helps tremendously in helping them move around a little bit. It diminishes how much they move with that. Another thing that I found to be really helpful with that and keeping stall mats in place and just making things look a little bit nicer is using some thick black Gorilla Tape down the seams. What this does is number one, it covers the seams up so you don't have dust, debris, water, whatever else, sweat, get down in there. Uh, but also it helps keep them in place a little bit. And now that I'm mentioning that with sweat, debris, dirt, and whatnot, one of the things I should mention with the stall mats itself is a question that I get from people in regards to is there mold or do I have to worry about moisture getting under them? And for the most part, I'll say no, because what I found when you go to Tractor Supply Store, typically the ones they have at my store have a smooth side that's flat and the other side underneath is a raised textured area, which is supposed to go down against the ground. Because there's a raised area and it's textured, there is some airflow under there. So I've never had an issue with mold or moisture. But that being said, one of the things I have noticed from speaking with a lot of people out there is depending on your own tractor supply store, they get different mats in at different times of the year. I have seen mats that are smooth on both sides, which I wouldn't recommend because there's gonna be no way for air to get in between that. I have seen mats that are textured on both sides, which I would not recommend because that means you're gonna to have to be standing on top of one of the textures one way or the other. So I would really look or call ahead to make sure which kind they have. Smooth side on top, texture side on bottom. In terms of what they look like, they are usually mostly black, but sometimes they have blue flex, white flex, gray flex. So it's gonna really depend. I don't think many people care because once you get them in, you'll notice that they attract a lot of dust. And that's where I'm gonna talk about my next point is cleaning these mats. So having that Gorilla Tape on top of those mats covering those seams helps because it keeps a lot of that dirt and dust out, but it also keeps out any kind of moisture. So depending on how you're cleaning your mats, you have a couple of different ways to do this. If you're in a garage like I am currently, easiest way, open the garage, get a leaf blower and blow all that dirt and debris off. It's very quick, very simple, and actually does a very good job. However, if you really wanna get down and dirty and clean these things well and have them looking like brand new, which I have a whole dedicated video on, but I'll give you the summary in this particular video right now, I like to do what I consider more of a dry mop. I don't like to get a big bucket full of water. I used to do that in the past. The problem with doing that is if you do that, you're gonna have a lot of moisture, and if you have open seams, you're gonna get water in those seams, and that's when you could potentially start developing some of that mold and other funky stuff living down there. So the Gorilla Tape helps with that, number one, but the better way to clean them, in my opinion, is to get some sort of all-purpose cleaner, like a big thing of Simple Green or something like that, dilute it a little bit in a little bit of water because you don't need something that's full strength necessarily, I'll get to that in just a second, and just spray down the mats a little bit and work each one with a mop and just work it like that. Don't worry about having a big bucket or anything like that. And it does a phenomenal job cleaning it and I'll flash some pictures of stuff that I've done previously with that. Now I say you might not wanna dilute it in some cases because some people when they get these really can't handle the smell. It's another thing I really wanna call out here. These things do not smell nice. They're big rubber mats. They're recycled rubber in most cases. A lot of times they're imported. 
they smell like it. They smell a little funky. It's a strong rubber odor. And for a lot of people, it's very overpowering, especially when you're driving home that initial trip from tractor supply store. But even once you get it in your space, especially if it's inside in like a bedroom or something like that, or in your basement, where you don't really have a way to air it out, some people like to clean these mats immediately, in which case I would use full strength cleaner a couple of times to help the smell dissipate. I will say for me, Part of it is it goes away, part of it is you just get used to it, but just know that it comes along with these mats. So that's the basic behind it. Go to Tractor Supply Store, get yourself some four by six foot mats that are three quarters of an inch thick. Make sure you're staggering them or stacking them accordingly if you're deadlifting on top of them. Some cheap Gorilla Tape definitely helps keep the seams down. Clean them as necessary or never if you don't want to. But those are just some quick, simple tips to help you with a good garage gym, basement gym floor. Hopefully that helps. If you have other questions, leave them in the comment section below. But as always, thanks for watching and stay big.